I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to go over a plugin that I've never done a video on before, and that's M Auto Align. Uh, the reason I haven't done that is because, to be honest, I don't do live drums that often. So I actually have a project from a long time ago, I think even before M Auto Align was re released. But today I'm going to use M Auto Align on this and show you how you can use it to quickly like improve your drums. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to do is just add it here. And let's take our kick. Let's see, I used this recently, auto line, have it there. So what I'm gonna do is just add this to the other tracks here. So we have a kick, we have a snare, and then we have a short snare here. And boom, okay. So now that we have this here, what I wanna do is I want to hit analyze, which is gonna analyze this as I play it. And it's gonna try to adjust the timing so all of these add up. So let's play it once first without any of these on here so you can hear what our drum track sounds like. Okay, so I have these grouped here where these are the close mics for our kick, our snare top and our snare bottom. And I have all of these in the group I'm gonna call drum set. You can choose the grouping here. And one of the reasons I'm actually setting it up like this is I'm going to separate this between these are the drum set, the close mics, and these are the overheads, and then we'll do them both together again. So we're gonna do lots of different alignment here. Now you can just do it all at once and I'll show you how to do that afterwards, but I think this I would say is the proper way. So let's do that. I'll leave this soloed so you can just hear the close mics. We have them all in here. Just click on one, click analyze as it's playing like this. So hopefully you hear that actually sounds a lot thicker and louder. So you're not getting as much phase cancellation and I'll Play it again, and this will bypass it. So it will bypass everything in this group so you can hear what it sounds like on and off, like this. So you can hear, without that phase cancellation, everything sounds much better. And so one of them will usually be set as the zero point. I guess in this case, it's this one, our snare top. And that one, you see there's no difference in the samples or the millisecond delay, etc. I think this is the phase inversion. Uh, but this one, which comes from our snare bottom, this one is delayed by 2.6 milliseconds and uh, or 123 samples. And let's see, our bass drum here is uh, delayed by 8.6 milliseconds. And you can hear that sounds a lot better. It's much thicker and everything sounds good. So next let's do the same thing, but let's do it to our overheads. So let's just hear our overheads before. So that's what our overheads sound like. Let's take instances of this on here. Make sure we change this. We actually, we started, we can save this for drum overheads there. So that resets everything to zero and it has group O for overheads here. I could change this to, let's say, drum set overheads like that. You see there's also other groups here that are already labeled, but you have letters and numbers here if you run out. So there we go, set this to drum overheads. We're gonna take this, just copy it over here. Let's open it up. We're gonna do the exact same thing, play it and analyze it. This one, I don't hear much difference. Uh, it's changing it by 2.8 uh, milliseconds. But to be honest, the overheads, I didn't really hear too many phasing problems. So these were actually okay. And lastly, what I wanna do is, let's play them both together. <music> to me, that's sounding much better. But we can do one more. We'll take M auto align, just copy it over here. 
into our close mic, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, what do we call it? Drum room mic. Let's just set it to default, and we'll leave this at group A here. And we're going to copy that over here to our overheads. Now, the way I have it routed is I have all my close mics here going into this close mic bus, and then I have my overheads going to the overhead bus. So I've aligned the kick and snares together. So those should be aligned. The two overheads should be aligned. And now let's align our close mics and our overheads. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Click analyze and then we'll hear what it does. So it lined everything up. In this case, the overheads and the close mics weren't so far out of phase, so it didn't really make too much of a difference. I just want to show you that's, I think, the best way to do it like that. But let's hear it one time, just doing it the easiest way possible. So let's erase some of these here, 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 here. We just have one here. Let's reset this, set it for drums here. Everything's reset. We're just going to put this on every single track here. So everything is in the same group. This is the easiest and fastest way. I just had one on there, copied it over. We're going to play it and then click Analyze. There you go. So that's the easiest and fastest way. You saw I did that and you can do that in maybe like 10 seconds and get everything aligned and ready to mix. It sounds really bad as you can hear at the beginning where you know everything's out of phase. It sounds like things are in a tin can in a box. You don't want that. Using M Auto Align, you can easily line things up. And there's other things you have in here, like for example, uh, spectral phase compensation, which I generally don't use. These may not be so bad, so it may not do much. Uh, I think maybe it'll do something with the snare here. But be a little bit careful because this does induce latency. And anytime you're using spectral, spectral stuff, sometimes it can smear the transient. So sometimes I don't like to use that, but you could. So you see here it has it analyzed. Um, let's when, Also, when you turn this one on, it will turn on for all other instances as well. You can see it. So it's compensating there. These should be all together. And let's listen to this. Sounding good, but one thing I noticed is the hi hats, they're getting like a whoosh, whoosh sound as opposed to like a clear hit. So we can just increase the smoothing and that should help it a bit. So I noticed with this on, it, you know, kind of opened up the high end a little bit. So you might want that. I think it's fine without it, but if you like that, you can. And if you notice that whoosh, whoosh sound, take the smoothing up a little bit. So it defaults at negative 10, which I think is too much. I moved it up to about like 25 or 30. And that sounded better to me. But of course, set this however you want. You can also uh, mess with the depth here. These analysis settings, uh, these can be used to uh, check different things. So if you have lots of low rumbling, maybe you want to. Uh, decrease, increase the high pass filter just so that's not analyzed as well. Uh, you can also change the uh, analysis length if you want to. I think this is good though. Uh, all these things I just generally leave alone. They work and they're much easier. The latency and delay can be used to shift things. So sometimes this might shift, uh, like for example, if I have this spectral phase compensation on, what it'll do is it's going to cause some latency. And so you can put it in there and it'll be compensated in your DAW. Or if you notice like, oh, okay, it's since I'm changing the alignment, I'm shifting things by 6.4 milliseconds or uh, that's 6.49 milliseconds. This is two milliseconds, uh, etc. If you notice that your tracks are maybe out, 
unaligned. So like, ah, oh, you know, these aren't really sounding the way they're supposed to. It sounds like it's, it's dragging a little bit. You can use the delay here to change that. Maybe I put 15 milliseconds here. Maybe I put 15 milliseconds of latency there. And that might help you get things back in line. So that's there if you notice something is not quite right. Although sometimes maybe that 15 seconds, uh, millisecond delay might actually make things sound better. You never know. So that's it. If you have any questions about M Auto Align, let me know. Maybe I'll do another video, but I think it's easy enough that, you know, just put it on there, hit analysis and try it. And in this case, it just sounded better. So in the future, maybe I'll use the same track and uh, I'll show you another drum plugin that's coming that will make this sound even better. So until then, please leave me a like, any comments, leave those down below and check out all the other plugins at melterproduction.com. Till next time, see you.